Today we're going to talk about the top five things I wish I had known when I was starting the hobby or that I would tell someone who's starting the hobby today. Now if you're a veteran, you've been in the hobby for a long time, down below, leave a comment and let people know what you think is the most important thing to kind of remember getting into this hobby. So my first thing is, you're gonna kill fish. No matter what you do, how good you are, or how good you aren't, some fish are gonna die. It's not always your fault. It can just be an accident. You go to feed your fish, you put the fish food in, or maybe someone in the family starts talking to you, you walk away, dinner's ready, you come back, fish jumped out. Fish are just gonna die. It's an unfortunate part of the hobby. But as Aquarius, we can do our best to minimize that and prevent that as much as we can and we should strive for that. But just know that there's always gonna be some death, whether it's dying of old age even. Even if you kept that Tetra for 10 years, it's still gonna pass away from old age. So there is still that sorrow there, but don't beat yourself up too much. Try and learn from each mistake or each thing that happens and get better the next time. And soon, you'll rarely have deaths. The second thing is filtration is important, but not the end all be all. When I was first getting into the hobby, I bought so many filters and changed out filters and this one's better and I read this one was better than that one and this one's even better and if I run two, if I run three, yes, it is important to have some filtration, but the gains are so minimal after you have a filter. Pick any filter on the market, even ones we don't sell, doesn't matter. We're not gonna need that box. If you have a filter and it has any amount of bacteria in it, probably it's handling your aquarium. now. There are in intricacies on how to service it or how you might like it, how much noise it makes, how much it costs, things like that. I would tell you, if you have a filter, maybe learn how it works really well and uh, you know optimize it a little bit, but don't go down the rabbit hole and, and have to try everything before you settle on something. The next one is everyone in the hobby is nuts, whether it's good or bad. Some people are really passionate, you know, like Dean, my friend Dean, he gets super excited for anything fish. <laughs> And there's people that are just crazy. If you don't do it my way, you're doing it wrong. And that gamut is probably like every hobby and, and everyone in the world. Just know that, you know, identify with someone you enjoy and take lessons from them, see what they're doing that you like, what they don't like. And really, I believe the aquarium hobby is something you do yourself. You can get bits of knowledge from other people, but we're all in this giant experiment going, let's see who can keep fish in a glass box the best the longest with the most enjoyment and I think a lot of people forget the most enjoyment is the winning element because if you're keeping it long and healthy and it looks great and it's breeding and doing all those things there should be a lot of enjoyment there if you're missing that enjoyment part you're not really doing this hobby the way it was meant to be done number four you're gonna buy way too much fish food and too often too much and every new one some reason we all fall into this trap of that's a new food my fish haven't tried maybe they'll like that one more i don't know if this one maybe it needs a treat i definitely went down that rabbit hole and i've done the whole gamut i mean we even make our own foods at this point now just kind of know it's there and you're gonna spend a bunch of money on it hopefully if you get enough fish tanks you won't be wasting it because stale food isn't really good for fish there's always that like well i like food and what if i find the next best restaurant and Buying fish food is kind of like that for your fish. If they really love it, they might grow better, they might color up more, they might live healthier. The problem with foods is they all, all of them have a different target, whether it's coloration, whether it's health, whether it's how much it pollutes the aquarium, whether it's price. You'll go through these different phases throughout your hobby of like, okay, maybe I want the healthiest fish because at the beginning, maybe you were killing fish, right? And then you're trying to buy foods from that. And then maybe you don't have that anymore and you want to breed fish. Now you're trying to get foods that'll breed fish. And then you might focus on health, right? Just like straight up, what's the healthiest long-term for my fish? You could be getting into live foods, live baby brine, getting mosquito, mosquito larvae from outside, Daphnia, all those kinds of things. And then maybe you come all the way back around to uh, you know where I'm at. And that's like, well, what's easy? What is reasonably priced? What does a good job? You know, it's gonna be individual for every aquarium, each fish, each fish owner, each country. You know, just know that's a natural process. You kind of have to try it all so you don't feel like you're missing out. Then you can come back in and settle on, okay, this is what I like to feed my fish. I feed these three things, they do really well. It fits the style that I do my aquariums. The last thing that I would tell myself or someone new getting into the hobby is, every aquarium is an experiment. And what I mean by that is, you don't know the outcome. That's why you kind of do it. So, you know, just because you have the same tank size as another tank at your house, or maybe a friend has, you might have different combinations of fish, different combination of plants. You might have different water than that tank does. You might have different foods. All of these things go into, it's like a new recipe every time you do it, and the outcome is not always the same. And so that's why we get to learn so much. Some people can be doing, I'm doing the same thing, but it's not coming out right. My cake never turned into a cake. It just stayed soup. 
oh, you forgot this ingredient or, oh, you let it sit for too long. There's so many factors at play that know that even when you, you know, I moved my 800 gallon aquarium from one home to a new home, right? And the water's different. Lots of things are already different, even though it's the same aquarium, same fish, all of that things change. So even just by changing a food or something like that, you can get, you know, algae blooming or not, right? Oh, time of year, it's hotter, it's colder. All these things play a part. And that is the reason I'm in the hobby. I love to experiment. I love to go, hmm, I wonder if I change this, what would happen in six months? I wonder if that happens, what would happen in six months? Would they cohabitate? Would they eat each other? Would they have more babies? I don't know. And that's what I think keeps us in the hobby for so long is because each tank, and that's why we have a lot of them is, Everyone is different. If we had 10 tanks and they're all the same, like, yep, I feed fish, that's all they do, there it is, I think we would get out of the hobby pretty quick. But when you look at it as like, wow, I'm running 10 different experiments, like that's something I haven't seen. What's this bug? What's this worm? What's that fish doing? I've never seen it do that before. That is really what draws you in. And so go into it with this, uh, this mindset of, I'm going to learn a ton about something that no one else is going to care about, and I'm going to be such a crazy fish person I want to tell everyone about it but they don't care until they experience it I really just enjoy the hobby and you know if you're if you're if you like this stuff join our channel uh you know subscribe do all that kind of stuff notifications and uh, we talk about fish all the time and I still run experiments every day of I wonder what would happen I wonder what happened if I make this video I wonder what happens if you watch this long will you subscribe hopefully you will We'll see you next time. If you really like what we're doing, consider becoming a member. Hit that join button on YouTube. It's right by the subscribe button. It's five bucks depending on where you're at in the world or if you're using an iPhone or not an iPhone. But you get extra videos, you get longer cuts of videos, you get community only posts, you get other extra perks. There's more perks always releasing all the time. And uh, just kind of a cool group of people to be uh, involved with. So if that sounds like it's good for you, hit that join button and give it a try. You know, it's five bucks for the first month. If you hate it, ditch it. If you love it, well, we'll see you around.